Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now, uh, I have given you this homework while discussing the conjugate directions method in the in some of the in the one of the previous uh, lectures. Now, I will solve this part of this homework this part this part, but I will keep this for you to try out. So, today I will begin by trying to solve. So, what I have to prove is the conjugate directions and the gradients are perpendicular to each other, but so what I have to really prove is the following is g k d i at any k is equal to 0 for all i uh, for sorry. So, for all i which is bigger than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to k strictly. What we do is that we use induction. So, by induction what we show is the following that we show that uh, let us assume g k d i is equal to 0 for all and to prove g k plus 1 d i is equal to 0 for. So, that is exactly what we have to do. So, you we have assumed this now let us start working it out. Let us observe this fact. Now, this one is very simple since g k is nothing but h x k plus b. So, g k plus 1 would be nothing but h x k plus 1 plus b. So, b would get cancelled out and uh, this is what you will have. Now, of course, you know that x k plus 1 is x k plus alpha that is how you update you using the conjugate gradient direction that is how you update alpha k d k. So, then g k plus 1 minus g k. Now, I can write this as alpha k d k. So, it will become alpha k h d k. Now, I multiply both sides by rather I take the inner product both sides by d i right for i. So, then I will get g k plus 1 d i is equal to g k d i plus alpha k d i h d k. Now, I have to prove this fact. So, basically I have to prove that for all 0 for all i equal from 0 to i equal to k this thing holds. So, first put i is equal to k and imply that plus alpha k d k h d k. Now, you know what is alpha k? Alpha k is already you have solved out alpha k. Now, what we have to do is now here I have to put the value of alpha k. So, alpha k is already known to me and that is minus g k d k d k h d k. So, if you do that, so then g k plus 1 d k is nothing but g k d k minus orientation. So, that you can follow it g k 
डी के this and uh, now here also we have d k h d k which cancels up h is positive definite matrix. So, it will this d k is non zero. So, these are all positive. So, this will cancel up and so we will be left with uh, g k d k now once you have done this, this is 0. So, you have proved for k, now you have, pro have to prove for anything other than k. Now, take consider i strictly less than k, then for that g k plus 1 d i is g k d i plus alpha k i stick alpha k you will come here d i h d k. So, since i is strictly less than k now, so our d i is not i is not equal to k. So, then by the fact that these are conjugate directions this would become 0 and the fact that we have already assumed when we started the proof then this would also become 0. So, ultimately So, this proves the fact. Now, uh, what, what is important to know that all these things that we have done all the conjugate direction or conjugate gradient method have been really applicable for uh, convex problem that too with uh, h a convex quadratic problem with h positive definite is really strongly convex or strictly convex quadratic problems. What about handling it for non quadratic problems or anything it is a for a, 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 any sort of convex problems for example, can we do something with that. So, for that Fletcher Reeves introduced a method called the Fletcher Reeves method, we are just going to outline this method here. Now, let us uh, write down the Fletcher Reeves method step by step. This can work for non quadratic uh, problems also. Actually, the shift from linear to non linear is quite a difficult shift. The methods, you know, they are not once you have non convex problems you have very less things available to you you just make a trial with whatever algorithms you have in your hand and see what you have that that's the only thing that you can possibly do and uh, recent research uh, in recent research there are efforts to take those points and try to give some quantitative justification about their behavior but, but that's absolutely at the frontier of research so we won't get into that issue at all but uh, I just want to recall and remind you that non convex optimization by the way is very very hard. Of course, there could be convex optimization problems which are also not so easy to handle, but there are algorithms which will support them, but for non convex problems you know, just do not know in large cases what to do. We will learn about sequential quadratic programming method methodology as we go along, but uh, you see that that has its own drawbacks as we as we come to it. Now, in Fletcher Reeves method. So, so, step 1 is to initialize your starting point x 0 and tolerance epsilon. Step 2 is to set k is equal to 0. Step 2 we should compute g 0 that is the gradient at x 0 and set the first conjugate 
direction that is set step 3 we do the most idealistic stuff find alpha greater than 0 which minimizes of course this minimization is done in an approximate way so here you have one dimensional minimization we have not spoken much about one dimensional minimization in this course possibly at the very end of this study about unconstrained optimization will take up uh, one day to explain some very important one dimensional minimization techniques because when you want to solve this problem where x k and d k are fixed then this is nothing but a function in alpha so then uh, basically you are talking about one dimensional minimization minimization of a one of a real function in real variables so f from r to r and once you have done that so that is alpha k so basically find alpha k i should say so which minimizes this set uh, your next iterate to x k plus 1 and x k plus 1 is x k plus alpha k d k is that I cannot I really do not know the solution, but when the distance between x k plus 1 and x k this distance that distance comes becomes very very small that is we are basically coming near the solution like, like if you had thought about steepest distance. So, there, there was the, this is your this is your level curves suppose suppose. So, say therefore, so level and so what would what would happen? Level curve means these are uh, the function values f x y equal to c because we are in two dimensional setup. You can see it very well. So you are you are here. So you take one con one direction, you moved here. Then you took another direction and you moved here. Then you are moving there and then you are moving there and then you are moving there and then here, then here, then here, then here. So as you go near the solution the this distance also decreases. Let, let me also give you an explanation that so if your thing is actually taking you to the solution then this is what should happen that is if x k is going to the solution x star then this is what should happen because then what I can do is I can write x k plus 1 minus x star when this is equal to plus x star minus x k and this is nothing but less than x k plus 1 minus x star plus x star minus x k and this all of so this whole thing now goes to 0. So, if I can show that the distance between these two consecutive ones becomes very very small basically I am trying to show that it is a Cauchy sequence essentially in some sense. So, if I can show that then I know that it will converge and that it will actually go to uh, towards the solution. right so for sufficient for k sufficiently large we can uh, if we can show that this is uh, true this distance is very very small then uh, i am almost near the solution then i can stop there so what i do now xk plus 1 minus xk is equal to alpha k dk and norm xk plus 1 minus xk is equal to alpha k d k. So, basically you really do not have to bother about x k plus 1 at very first you just take alpha k d k check if norm alpha k d k is strictly less than epsilon step 4 step 4. So, there are two answers to it yes and no. So, if it is yes, stop and take x k plus 1 as the solution 
approximate in fact uh, has the approximate solution approximate solution I should write. If it is no then do the following there comes step 5. If k is equal to n minus 1, right, set x 0 is equal to x k plus 1 and go back to step 2. if k is equal to n minus 1. So, we have not reached our solution in n minus 1 steps, then we have to again restart the procedure. If not, else compute g k plus 1 and beta k is equal to g k plus 1 g k plus 1. g k g k that is a nice one and then you compute the next direction d k plus 1 because from there x k plus 1 now you have to go to x k plus 2. So, you are computing the d k plus 1 is equal as minus g k plus 1 in the same way we have done for the power of this uh, s is uh, conjugate gradient method plus b k to d k and you see now once you have that what you can do is set set k is equal to k plus 1 and go back to step 3 and go back to step 3 or rather assign k equal to k plus 1. Okay, go back. So, this is an approach see why this k equal to n minus 1 because in the quadratic case where when you have positive definite hesion in n minus 1 steps you are basically uh, getting the solution. So, so in n iterations basically n iterations you are getting the solution and here I am in n minus 1 at step and I am yet to get the solution. So, I have to reset x naught as x 1 and take it at the starting point and start the whole procedure again right. because at k is equal to n minus 1 I have not got the solution. So, this is some sort of slight uh, restriction that is there at k equal to n I am supposed to get the solution uh, and I have started from x 0. So, I have, I have uh, x 0 then in n steps. So, a, x n minus 1 would be my just, just a moment. So, as we have already uh, seen in the our previous studies that in n steps in the case of when h is positive definite in n steps we are coming to the solution. So, this we can come to the solution in just n steps right we start with x 0 and x n we will be x star. So, here when k is you can say why k should not be n minus 1, but I have started with k equal to 0 and I have come to k equal to n minus 1, which I have. So, I have taken n steps right 0 at step, first step, second step, third step, nth step, n minus 1 is the nth step in this case. So, I have reached, reached the nth step. So, even if I have reached the nth step, uh, so, so x n should be my solution. So, here I have reached the nth step, but I have not got the solution that that is the if k is that that is the whole idea if k is equal to n minus 1. So, I have already taken nth k is from 0 to n minus 1 I have taken n step this is the nth step and 0th iteration the first iteration 0th iteration first iteration second iteration k n minus 1. So, basically I have taken n steps I have got my come to my n minus 1 th iteration in the next iteration I am supposed to get the uh, solution 
but at k equal to n minus 1 if I do not get the solution then I really have to restart the procedure that is because we are handling non convex problems we are not sure whether at n nth step we are going to get a solution we are not non quadratic problem with we do not know anything about the functions nature. So, then a little bit of extra risk caution is kept here by putting k is equal to n minus 1 and then again restarting the whole procedure from x not equal to x k plus 1. Now, we are going to end our discussion of uh, conjugate directions and conjugate gradient method with this very important class and then we will go into a very uh, slightly interesting uh, I problem called the least square problem. Now, what does this least square problem means? So, least square problems is how optimization can help you in solving, how optimization can help you in solving equations and let us just see uh, what we can do about it. Want to, I have an m cross n matrix and I want to solve this equation. So, A is m cross n matrix and x is an n vector and B is in R n. So, now uh, this need not have unique solution it depend on the relation between m and n. So, in general it can have many solutions and it is not see I do not know that uh, there is a, because m is not equal to n I have no idea about the invertibility in this case and so I cannot really figure out what is the solution so easily I it is not so easy to figure out one solution even. If b is 0 then ok x can be 0 then one of the solutions if b is non 0 I do not know. How do I try to attempt to how do I attempt to solve this sort of uh, system of equation because these things come up very uh, much in applications. See what I can prefer to do instead of trying to solve it I construct this function it is called the residual function. So, if I take an x I take any x in R n and put here in and multiply it with a. Then if a x is not equal to b if it is not the solution then a x minus b this vector is a non 0 vector and then the norm of that would be non 0. So, if x is not a solution then so this quantity is called the residual this quantity sometimes what the more terminology loving p person is called the residual so x is not a solution then this will happen. So, if x is a solution a x minus b is would be equal to 0 and then that x would actually be the minimum of this problem because this is always greater than equal to 0 for any x for which a x minus b is a x is a x is equal to b that x must be a solution of the minimization of this problem over R n. So, if x star solves a x equal to b if and only if x star solves the problem minimize r x x element of R n where R x is in this case
Now, how do you, uh, so if, if I want to solve this problem, I can actually solve them this minimization problem, but how do I prove that? If x star solves a x equal to b, then naturally a x star is equal to b and r x star is equal to 0. Hence, r x is greater because r, r x is greater than equal to 0 for all x. So, r x star. So, so x star minimizes r x. Now, if x star minimizes r x, how do I show that uh, you have this as the solution? If x star minimizes r x, then that x star would solve a x star equal to b. So, if x star uh, minimizes, suppose x star minimizes r x, Then, if x star minimizes r x, then what would happen? I can write that the gradient of this problem must be 0. So, I have already known that x star is minimizing r x. So, gradient of f of x star So, that would give me a transpose a x star minus b is equal to 0 or a transpose a x star is equal to a transpose b. That is that's what it gives me. What I have found here is actually a critical point. So, if this happens, then this is if this happens, then this is this is what will happen. Then can I say here that a x star is equal to b? From this, can I say that a x star is equal to b, which looks uh, quite uh, clear. Now, suppose a is of full rank, a is of full column rank, right? then a transpose a is actually invertible. Then you can write x star if a is of rank n, that is a is of full column rank, right? if a is of rank n, then x star is equal to a transpose b. Now, if I can get this So, if x star solves this problem, then grad f x star must be equal to 0 and x star must have this form. Then if a is of rank n, then x star must have this form. Then what I have? Then a x star, then a of x star is equal to a of a transpose a inverse a transpose b. See, because uh, a is 
of rank n a transpose a becomes a positive definite matrix that is very important and that is why it is invertible. So, if a is of rank n is a positive definite is a positive definite matrix. So, they prove this in the homework. So, this is your homework. Okay. Now, what is A x star? So, let me see what happens. So, now this can be written as A, A inverse, A transpose inverse, because A B inverse is B inverse A inverse. So, this is A inverse, A transpose inverse, A transpose inverse B. This is identity and this is identity. So, you have A x star is equal to B. So, I will now modify what I have written. So, this is how you discover things in mathematics by trying it out. So, I have not written it purposefully, but what I have now done, what I have written? I have written that if A is of rank n, let, so my result is let A be of rank n of full column rank, then x star solves a x equal to b if and only if x star solves this problem. Then, so you see then now we have the full result. Now, this is my result. So, basically now if I want to solve this problem, what I will first do is I will first find a point like this. Right, and then if A is of rank n, and if I am now trying to minimize this problem, if I find a critical point of this problem, any critical the critical point of x star, if A is of rank n, critical point of R x, sorry, I have written it should be R x, critical point of R x is of this form. And we want to show that this critical point is actually a minimum. This critical point is actually a minimum that is very, very important to show. So, R of x is norm A x minus B whole square. So, take any x in R n. Now, once you know this, you can write this as Star minus B. Now, this term would be 0 because of this fact, because we know that if x star is a critical point, if x star is a critical point, if x star is a critical point. So, the critical point of this least square problem. If I minimize this, if I find this critical point when a rank of a is n, then that critical point is actually a solution of this problem. And we have shown that that critical point is actually solving the original problem a x star equal to b. So, if I can, so it is very nice that I can actually 
in an exact way I can find, I have an exact analytic expression for this and that is the beautiful part which you do not always have in optimization. So, if x star is a critical point then what you have, so the derivative I have again made a small mistake in my writing, but please forgive me for this because this is something you can figure out because here instead of f it should be r because we are trying to find the critical point of r. So, then grad r x star is equal to 0 and again I leave it as a homework for you to figure out that the derivative of r x that is it is it is your homework to figure out that the gradient of r x is nothing but a transpose a x minus b. So, so this implies a transpose a x star minus b is equal to 0. Now, if you look at the expression 2 or a x minus a x star. So, let me just figure forget this 2 a x star minus b and this is nothing but a into x minus x star by matrix property and a x star minus b and that is equal to x minus x star a transpose a x star minus b and that is you already know it is 0. So, this is 0. So, now this is 0 and this is greater than equal to 0. So, what are what we have proved that we have proved that r x is greater than equal to r x star which is this part. So, this is your r x star. So, hence x star is the minimum of r x. So, any critical point there is one critical point the critical point of this function is actually a minimum of this of this and hence and is also a solution of the equation a x star or a x equal to b provided a is of rank n. So, this is a very very important uh, requirement of rank n. So, if some little bit of extra things that we have if you put in some little assumption things uh, flow in a much more interesting way. Okay. So, tomorrow we will start uh, in the next class by talking to you about the Gauss Newton method and talking to you about the least square problem in a more general way. This is just an example to show you the importance of the least square problem, how um, optimization can be used even to solve a equation a this linear equation. So, and then we will discuss a bit about Gauss Newton method and after that we will start talking about the quasi Newton method and then return to theory for a while for and then get into return to theory for a while for the unconstrained case and get into the study of the celebrated Kuntagar conditions. Thank you.